Welcome to College Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. UK universities are failing their finance exams. How the guilty conviction of a US school shooter's mother sets a contentious precedent. Taylor Swift launches legal broadside at a college student who tracks private jets via public data. This Florida university was just ranked among the nation's best for online degrees. Indonesia election 2024 calls for dual citizenship heat up amid brain drain. UK universities are failing their finance exams. Bloomberg. The UK's higher education funding model is becoming increasingly unsustainable as universities become more reliant on fees from international students, according to an op-ed in Bloomberg. The article states that while this dependence may seem positive in terms of subsidizing the education costs of domestic students, it presents a concentration of risk. There is a concern that the current funding system is not sustainable, and universities' efforts to attract higher-paying international students may be squeezing out British applicants. The op-ed suggests that universities need to find a more stable and sustainable financial footing, possibly through increased fees for UK students and more state funding. How the guilty conviction of a US school shooter's mother sets a contentious precedent. ABC. Jennifer Crumbly has become the first parent in the US to be convicted in connection with a mass school shooting by their child. Although she did not pull the trigger, she was found responsible for failing to safely secure the gun and ammunition at home, as well as failing to seek support for her son's mental health. Legal experts warn that the landmark ruling could pave the way for other parents to be held accountable for their child's crimes, and that it may disproportionately impact people from underprivileged groups. Taylor Swift launches legal broadside at a college student who tracks private jets via public data. Associated Press. Taylor Swift has issued a cease and desist letter to a student who tracks the private jets of celebrities, including Swift, using public data and social media. In the letter, the law firm Venable accuses the student of providing stalkers with a roadmap of Swift's whereabouts. However, the student argues that tracking celebrities' jets is a matter of transparency and public information. The student's tracking accounts repackage data from the Federal Aviation Administration, a government agency. The student also had a dispute with Elon Musk regarding his tracking accounts, but Musk later banned him from the site. This Florida university was just ranked among the nation's best for online degrees. Yahoo! The University of Florida has been ranked as the second-best online bachelor's degree program in the country, according to a ranking by U.S. News & World Report. The university also tied for second place in the ranking of best online master's degrees in education. UF was the only Florida school to earn a top three spot in the annual ranking. The rankings evaluate schools based on factors such as faculty credentials and training, services and technologies available to students, student engagement, and expert opinion on the academic quality of programs. Indonesia election 2024 calls for dual citizenship heat up amid brain drain. South China Morning Post. Marsha Siagian, a legislative candidate in Indonesia, is pushing for the long-delayed legislative process to allow for dual citizenship. Indonesian citizens currently lose their nationality when they obtain foreign passports. Marsha argues that this law is causing a brain drain as many highly skilled Indonesians work overseas due to limited employment opportunities in their fields in Indonesia. She suggests that the ban on dual citizenship is one of the reasons for the brain drain and if the trend continues, Indonesia will lose talent. She argues that Indonesia should change its laws to allow for dual citizenship to prevent the brain drain. However, the Indonesian government has questioned the patriotism of Indonesians who give up their citizenship. Marsha believes that Indonesia should strengthen its scientific research and development sectors to ensure that highly skilled individuals can find employment in the country. She is one of the few legislative candidates pledging to represent Indonesians living overseas by advocating for dual citizenship. Hong Kong has plenty of room for maneuver on debt-to-GDP ratio, Economist says. South China Morning Post. Experts are urging the Hong Kong government to issue more bonds to finance major construction projects and build up a land bank. They argue that Hong Kong has plenty of room to borrow, as its debt-to-GDP ratio is low compared to other advanced economies. The experts propose raising the debt-to-GDP ratio to 10% from the current 6%, which they believe would be acceptable. They also emphasize the importance of using the borrowed funds for investment in the future and infrastructure, rather than operating expenditures. The experts argue that the investment return from these projects would be significant, both in terms of economic benefits and social benefits. They also suggest that financial institutions such as banks and life insurance companies would have a strong demand for long-term bonds to match their future liabilities. 
The suggestions come as the Hong Kong government faces pressure to slow down work on massive projects due to a budget deficit and poor land sales performance. However, the experts believe that increasing the debt-to-GDP ratio and issuing more bonds would not have a negative impact on Hong Kong's financial stability. They argue that the government should be more progressive and increase its borrowing to fund major projects and invest in the city's future. They also suggest reducing reliance on land premium revenue through bond issuance and investment, and diversifying sources of income in the long term. Overall, the experts believe that issuing more bonds and increasing the debt-to-GDP ratio would be a beneficial strategy for Hong Kong to finance major construction projects and build up its land bank. They argue that the investment return would be significant and that the borrowing would not have a negative impact on Hong Kong's financial stability. International Connections, Haruhiko Kuroda, 28. Nikkei Asia. Haruhiko Kuroda, former governor of the Bank of Japan, BOJ, reflects on his interactions with various prominent figures in the finance industry. He mentions Michel Camdessis, former managing director of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, with whom he worked on the Emerging Markets Forum. Kuroda also mentions former European Central Bank, ECB, President Mario Draghi and current U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. He also recalls interacting with Nobel Prize-winning economists Professor Amartya Sen, Joseph Stiglitz, and Paul Krugman. You pen to start producing documents on Wednesday in response to House anti-Semitism investigation. CNN. The University of Pennsylvania, UPenn, will begin the process of turning over documents to Congress as part of a House committee investigation into anti-Semitism. However, the university has indicated that it may not be able to provide all of the requested documents by the Wednesday deadline. UPenn plans to submit the documents in a rolling production over the next few weeks. The House Education Committee had previously requested a range of documents related to anti-Semitic activity on campus, the university's response to hate crimes, and a Palestinian literature festival held on campus. The committee has not commented on UPenn's response. Department of Education is investigating Harvard after Palestinian and Muslim students file complaint. CNN. The Department of Education is investigating Harvard University's handling of alleged discrimination on campus following a federal civil rights complaint which was filed on behalf of Muslim and Palestinian students. The students claim that the school failed to protect them from harassment and intimidation following the recent attack on Israel by Hamas. This new investigation adds to the existing scrutiny of Harvard and other universities over allegations of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia on campus. Harvard has launched a presidential task force to fight Islamophobia and anti-Arab bias and is trying to understand why and how these acts are happening. How to be yourself at work, without it costing you a promotion. Telegraph. Finding the right balance between authenticity and fitting in is a common dilemma, especially for women working in traditional, male-dominated environments. The concept of bringing your whole self to work is often promoted, but in practice, those who conform often have an easier path. Companies may say they want people to be themselves at work, but in reality, those who fit the existing mold are more likely to be promoted. To navigate this, Baroness Helena Morrissey suggests becoming bilingual at work. This involves understanding and speaking the language of the majority while not forgetting your own. Be observant and learn how others communicate, the office politics, and how people get noticed and promoted. Use this knowledge to your advantage without compromising who you are. An example Morrissey gives is when she started the 30% Club, which aimed to achieve better gender-balanced corporate boards. She understood how chairmen worked and called the campaign a club as a deliberate tactic. By doing so, she gained their support and respect without compromising herself. Being authentic can help individuals stand out for the right reasons and true leaders are often different. The key is to know when to leverage that difference and when to tone it down. T- cough? Sore throat? More schools suggest mildly sick kids attend anyway. Yahoo! Widely varying guidance on when to keep children home has only added to the confusion, which many see as a factor in the nationwide epidemic of chronic school absences. Some advocates in school systems and the state of California are now encouraging kids to come to class even when they have the sniffles or other nuisance illnesses like lice or pink eye. Families need to hear they no longer must keep kids home at any sign of illness, said Hedy Chong, the executive director of Attendance Works. The national nonprofit aimed at improving attendance has issued its own guidance, urging parents to send kids to school if they can participate in daily activities. Wednesday's time schedule. Associated Press. There are several NBA games scheduled for Wednesday evening, including the Cleveland Cavaliers vs. the Washington Wizards, the Toronto Raptors vs. the Charlotte Hornets, and the Golden State Warriors vs. the Philadelphia 76ers.
In NHL action, the Dallas Stars will face off against the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Tampa Bay Lightning will play the New York Rangers. In college basketball, there are several top 25 men's and women's games, including No. 6 Tennessee vs. LSU, No. 9 Duke vs. Notre Dame, and No. 11 Yukon vs. Seton Hall. Biden trade chief calls tariffs important defensive tool. Bloomberg. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai has referred to tariffs as an important defensive tool for addressing unfair commercial relationships, particularly with China. While she considers tariffs to be the least interesting aspect of the U.S.-China trade relationship, she acknowledges their role in leveling the playing field. The Biden administration is currently evaluating the future of import taxes on over $300 billion worth of Chinese goods that were initially imposed by former President Donald Trump. The tariffs were implemented as a means to pressure Beijing on issues such as intellectual property theft and technology transfer. The administration is considering potential increases in tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles and other goods. Some U.S. lawmakers are also pushing for curbing economic ties with China, including raising tariffs and restricting Chinese investment. How many legal challenges is the NCAA facing? It is a lot and the impacts could be big. Associated Press the NCAA is facing multiple legal challenges that could potentially upend college athletics. One of the lawsuits, House vs. the NCAA, could cost the NCAA in major conferences over $4 billion in damages and lead to athlete revenue sharing. Another issue involves whether college athletes should be considered employees and granted employee status, which is being considered by the National Labor Relations Board and is the subject of a federal lawsuit in Pennsylvania. There are also lawsuits seeking to lift NCAA rules on athlete compensation and athlete transfers. Reports, RNC chair expected to step down as Trump focuses on NCGOP leader as successor. Yahoo! Ronna McDaniel, the chair of the Republican National Committee, RNC, is expected to step down this spring after former President Donald Trump grew critical of her leadership. Trump wanted her to cancel the Republican primary debates last fall, but McDaniel refused. Trump has reportedly been telling people he wants to make a change at the RNC. Well, folks, that's all the news we have for today. Let's do a quick recap. UK universities are facing financial challenges as they become more reliant on international student fees. A US school shooter's mother has been convicted, setting a precedent for holding parents accountable for their child's crimes. Taylor Swift is in a legal battle with a student who tracks celebrities' private jets. The University of Florida has been ranked as one of the best for online degrees. Calls for dual citizenship in Indonesia are heating up amid concerns of a brain drain. Experts suggest Hong Kong should issue more bonds to finance major projects. Haruhiko Kuroda reflects on his interactions with finance industry figures. The University of Pennsylvania is turning over documents to Congress as part of an investigation into anti-Semitism. Harvard is being investigated by the Department of Education following complaints of discrimination against Muslim and Palestinian students. Finding the balance between authenticity and fitting in at work can be a challenge. Some schools are suggesting that mildly sick children attend classes to reduce chronic absences. And finally, there are several sports games and matches scheduled for tonight. Now, let's dive into these stories a bit. The financial model of UK universities is facing challenges as they become more reliant on fees from international students. While this may seem positive in terms of subsidizing the education costs of domestic students, it also presents a concentration of risk. It's important for universities to find a more stable and sustainable financial footing. In the US, the conviction of a school shooter's mother has set a controversial precedent. Legal experts warn that this ruling could pave the way for holding parents accountable for their child's crimes which may disproportionately impact underprivileged groups. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. Taylor Swift is known for her legal battles, and now she's going after a student who tracks celebrities' private jets. The student argues that tracking the jets is a matter of transparency and public information, but Swift's camp accuses him of providing stalkers with information about her whereabouts. It's a clash between privacy and public information, and it will be interesting to see how this plays out. In education news, the University of Florida has been ranked as one of the best for online degrees. It's great to see a Florida school earning recognition in this field. And in Indonesia, there are calls for dual citizenship to prevent a brain drain of highly skilled individuals. It's an important issue that deserves attention. Moving on to Hong Kong, experts are urging the government to issue more bonds to finance major projects. They argue that Hong Kong has plenty of room to borrow, and the investment return from these projects would be significant. It's a strategy that could benefit the city's future. 
Former Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda reflects on his interactions with prominent figures in the finance industry. It's always interesting to hear about these behind-the-scenes interactions and the insights they provide. In the U.S., the University of Pennsylvania is turning over documents to Congress as part of an investigation into anti-Semitism. It's important for universities to address and combat discrimination on campus, and this investigation is a step in the right direction. Similarly, the Department of Education is investigating Harvard's handling of alleged discrimination against Muslim and Palestinian students. It's crucial for universities to create a safe and inclusive environment for all students. Finding the balance between authenticity and fitting in at work can be a challenge, especially for women in male-dominated environments. It's important to understand the dynamics of the workplace and use that knowledge to your advantage. Being authentic can help individuals stand out for the right reasons. In education news, some schools are suggesting that mildly sick children attend classes to reduce chronic absences. This is a response to the confusion surrounding when to keep children home from school. It's a complex issue with arguments on both sides, but ultimately, it's important for families to make informed decisions about their children's health. And finally, in sports news, there are several games and matches scheduled for tonight. So, if you're a sports fan, make sure to tune in and cheer on your favorite teams. That's all for today, folks. Remember, these news stories are just the tip of the iceberg, and there's always more to explore. So keep an eye out for updates and feel free to share your thoughts and questions. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.